Hi, this is Brad with Copper Creek Cuts, a lawn care company in Northeast Florida. And today we are doing a review on the Moox three wheel self propel mower. Now, a little bit of backstory. I saw this mower for the first time, GIE 2018 on the showroom floor. And I said, man, this is really neat. How come I've never seen a three wheel mower before this? Turns out because there's some pretty big issues with this design. This video is just gonna highlight the things that you need to be concerned with if you're thinking about getting a mower like this. These are gonna be all the flaws with this mower. First, this isn't a cheap mower. They sell three models. The first one is just a regular push mower. That's about $385 on Amazon. This is a self-propel model. That was $390 something when I bought it. So it's like, why would I get the non-self-propelled? And then they've got a self-propelled electric start that's about $500. So these are not cheap mowers. If these were only $200 mowers, you could kind of overlook some of the flaws, but, but they're not, they're not cheap mowers. The issues, and anytime you've got a list of all the issues so you can remember to hit them, you know you're, you're in trouble. So the discharge chute, this mower, you can set up to mulch as it is now. You can bag with it. You can put aside discharge chute. Because of the design of how it attaches, the discharge chute fell out very easily if there were any kind of unevenness in the terrain. So let's say, you know, what was right here was just a little bit higher than the deck. It would catch the front lip of that discharge chute and just pop it right out because it's just two shallow plastic tabs that are holding it in. When you're going on a slope, gravity is pulling the front of this mower down and you have to fight it. And so it's wanting to dip down to follow that slope downhill. Very frustrating. The locking feature does work and it's nice, but if you have a yard where you have to lock this mower for any extended period of time, you might as well just get a four wheel mower. One of the great benefits of this machine is the maneuverability that you don't have to pick it up to turn it. And as I say that now, this front wheel is locked up and I can't pivot it. <laughs> you don't have to lift the machine up to turn it. If you've got to lock that front wheel because of slopes, you're basically better off with just a cheaper four wheel push mower. So if you've got a lot of slopes in your yard or hills, this thing might, might not be a good choice. The self propel slips, it's got very light tires in the back. They're just, you know, super cheap plastic tires. And on my thicker St. Augustine and even some parts of my dad's uh, more compact Zoysia or Centipede, whatever he's got, it the wheels would slip. Uh, when you engage that self-propel. So that's one thing that, that isn't ideal too. I, I think that's just because of how cheap and light those wheels are. There's no real substance for it to grip. And the tread, it, it's just a, a cheap plastic tread too. So maybe if there was a real rubber tread, it would do better. Height markers are pretty confusing. That's to be expected from anything that, that comes from China, I think. Let me get a little more comfortable as we, this is gonna be a long video. <laughs> They're all in metric. So you've got like 25, 35, 45, 55. This goes from one to three inches. So you're gonna to have to do some mental math to try and figure out what height am I actually cutting at. One thing that is a quirk that you'll have to get used to, if you've been used to, to four wheel mowers your whole life, when you turn around, you gauge where you're going based on the tire marks that, that mowers left. On this one, you've got three tire tracks, but they're all fainter because they're only going over at one time. That's that's a little something weird you've got to get used to. The self-propel on this model, it doesn't list a speed, but I wouldn't think it's more than two miles an hour. It is very slow. If you want to push mow without the self-propel, just using your own strength, you can, but it's a little bit more tiring because you're kind of fighting against the transmission in, in neutral, uh, the extra weight of the transmission. The other thing too is that as you go faster, this three wheel design, it doesn't handle bumps as smoothly as its four wheel counterpart. Each wheel is absorbing more shock, which means that you, you get a lot more jostle in your, in your mow. Now that might be dependent on your yard. If your yard is perfectly flat, good. Uh, I've got lots of little low spots, high spots, bare spots. Now we're getting into the biggest issues with this mower and that's its three wheel design. If you have a bar stool with four legs and you cut one of those legs short, 
depending on where the balance is, you can still sit on those three legs, right? It might not be the safest thing and it might not be the best thing, but you can still sit on it. If you have a three leg bar stool and you cut one of those legs off, you're not sitting in that chair, right? That's kind of the issue that you run into with this. When you're going over bumps and depressions in the lawn, you've only got one front wheel. There's no floating. So if this front wheel hits a divot, you're gonna bottom this thing out. And while this is an extreme scenario because nobody's ever gonna take a nosedive off of the edge of a driveway like this, I just do it to show you what these mowers will do when they hit low spots. Your four wheel mower, he's kind of going to coast over it, right? The, the three wheels that aren't in the low spot are taking the weight of the machine and it's helping it over. This three wheel machine, this front wheel just digs right in. It, there's nothing to float over. That's one big disadvantage of the three wheel design. Because it's three wheels, you can almost tip this thing. I've had several instances in, in the times I mowed my yard where I was going around just a little bit of a raised spot where going around and turning very sharply created a, a, a tipping effect. Is it the end of the world? No. I mean, you've got to lift up a four wheel mower to turn it anyway, but it is something to consider. It's, it's such a neat idea, but very quickly you see why no one ever does this because there's a lot of very serious drawbacks. I think there's a whole lot of quirks that you have to get used to, and then there's some really serious design flaws that I just don't think there's any getting over. So I think that, especially with its price point of $400, the only pr people I could recommend this to are people who, um, or maybe physically unable to pick up and move a, a four wheel mower. You know, they can't push down and spin around. They have to turn with the machine on the ground. And if that's the case, I would even strongly recommend you to just look at a four wheel caster mower. They have these. Cub Cadet makes a bunch of different varieties. They make four wheel caster mowers that, get this, are right around $400 too. So. Again, I don't want to just completely seem like I'm bashing this brand. I don't really know anything about Moox other than it looks like they're, you know, just getting Chinese products and selling them with customer service here in America. But this three-wheel design, stay away from it. Even if, even if you need the one advantage of this machine, which is that pivoting front caster, I would still say don't get it. Get the four wheel models because then you're going to be able to float over low spots in your yard. You're not going to tip when you're going over. You're going to have a smoother ride if your lawn is bumpy. It's just, I hate to be such a negative Nancy, but it's definitely one of the most negative videos of a product that I've ever done. There's no scenario I can think of where I would ever recommend this to somebody. If this were a $200 mower, maybe I'd be singing a different tune. Maybe I would but it's $400, that's, that's a lot of money. So, I hope that video answered some questions. Maybe you never knew about this before, so hopefully you learned something. If you've got any other questions, please feel free to leave them below. If you liked this video, here's some more that YouTube thinks you might like. If, if you're in the market for a lightly used Moox self-propel mower with 3.8 hours, please contact me because uh, I don't want it. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it.